get to the back porch. For the past few weeks, I've been talking a lot about, about controlling our golf swing so that we can hit fairways and greens. And I just wanted to bring up a, a point that again happens in playing a game of golf with, a, with one of my students uh, a few days ago. And we're talking about controlling power. We've always talked about that. You've got to control power, and you stay, it all starts with your mind. And, and the key is, as I've always said, to be a do-bopper, hit fairways and greens, and, and just be that golfer everybody wishes that, that they could be. The guy you know you play with, he just bops it down the middle, bops it on the green or near the green, and when he misses a green, he's got that great short game to get it up close to the hole and makes the putts because he spends a lot of time practicing his chipping and putting. So the point I want to bring up now is, is that normally when we get into that killer mode, the point where we want to, we're on the tee, we want to go for that par five, and, and, and we think we can reach it in two, uh, for whatever reason, the conditions are favorable, or this is a hole that you reach fairly, fairly often, but you've got to hit it big. And you put yourself into that power up mode. Powering up usually implies tightening up your muscles, and as soon as they get tighter, right from the start of the swing, the exact, exact split second your backswing starts, your backswing is just about almost as fast as your forward swing is going to be. So everything's out of, out of sequence. The timing, the tempo's gone. And, and very likely because you're here, what's going to happen with most folks, especially playing these extra long drivers, is that your swing is going to get long. I, this golfer I was playing with, basically almost all of his irons, no problem. Beautiful three-quarter backswing. His fairway woods are pretty good. And in many cases, as long as he's staying in the do-bop mode and just thinking about knocking it down the middle, he can pretty much stay three quarters, long three quarters with his driver. But I can tell a sec in, in a New York second what's coming. When I just see that backswing get fast, what I'm going to see is what I call, and I say to him every time at the end of the swing, I said, Zaro. He gets up here, and then he comes up, and the swing gets so long, and it's going to have a, you know, just a crazy move up there like that. You know, like when the Zaro showed it, he made the Z with his, with his sword. And, and when I say Zaro to this guy, he just, he just goes crazy because he knows that, Zaro is awful, and when he go, when he does that zigzag up there or do what diddy, whatever you want to call it, and everything goes crazy. It's almost like as if I I had some 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 type of uh, cables or something on him where I could just push the button. He goes, and he just goes crazy up there, and 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 like give him electrical shock, and everything just 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 jerks his muscles and, and uncontrollably, and and then realistically, that's what it is. He's swinging so hard, he's out of control. His mind and his muscles are gone. And with that super long driver, and he's swinging it very fast, I mean, if the club goes crazy up there, and once it does all of this stuff, who knows how it's coming back. It could come back with the, with the face wide open. It could come back and, he, and, and, he, and reverse weight shift a little bit and flip the club over and hit pull hooks and duck hooks. But the point is, is it's no longer smooth. It's no longer vertical. It's no longer, you know, up and down with, with good, solid, firm wrist, straight up and down. It's, there's all kinds of things happening up there. And nobody can play successful golf when you get in these, when you get in these sort of uh, hair, crazy twitching and flinching and flexing and flopping moves at the top. Because I've always said if it, if it flops at the top, it's going to flip. In this case, it's all kinds of crazy directions. And I see that a lot in golfers. Mostly, more than anything, they'll go up and they'll just get long and they'll hit and just kind of sort of like flop and flip back, rebound. And, but the point is, at that point, the club is out of control. The club is swinging you. You're not swinging the club. Remember the surgism. I'm going to swing the club. The club does not swing me. So keep it under control. We know the peak performance golf swing is a limited turn, three-quarter swing. Stand the club up, 12 o'clock, light. That's where you get control from. It's straight back in the mitten up the tree, straight back down to return the club to impact. That's the way you swing and make good golf. Know your strengths. Know your limitations. Stay within good muscle tone for a good tempo. And just think about hitting good shots. I'm going to say I've said it before and I'll say it again. If you want to play good golf, just be a do bopper. Your thought is to bop it down the middle, bop it on the green. Fairways and greens is the, is the key. And again... When you play that way, and even if you miss the greens, you'll very likely be a lot closer to the green. So keep working on your short game to get the ball up and down, the short game, chipping, pitching, bunker shots, and then the putty. Because that's where you score. That's where it happens. Keeping the ball in play. And the ball stays in play if you can keep yourself in play, your mind and your body, and most importantly, your club. Well, that's it for the surge with Lee's falling on me here. It's, it's falling. It's starting to come down. So again, control yourself to control your club to control your ball. 
That's, the, that's, if anything, the answer, the secret to playing better golf. Well, that's it for the search for today, and I'll be talking to you all again soon.